Hey, at this time, we welcome into the media center Jeff Gordon, driver of the number 24 DuPont Chevrolet, who will start the 30th annual Five Hour Energy 500 tomorrow in third position. Uh, this is Jeff's 22nd top 10 start at Pocono. It is his sixth and 14 races this season. Uh, Jeff, just talk a little bit about the qualifying run and, and the threat of weather today and the strategy you guys use for qualifying. Yeah, I'll be honest. Uh, prior to uh, event. That run, I, I was kind of hoping it was going to rain because, uh, you know, we made a qualifying, a couple qualifying runs yesterday, and 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 you know, the pole weren't really thrilled with the uh, with with, Texas, with the pace. Um, you know, the track was definitely a lot different yesterday. It was hot and slick. We actually made our fastest lap in our in our in race trim yesterday. Um, the car in race trim. Uh, you know, and, and so wasn't really sure what to expect today. Obviously, looking at the lap times and seeing just how fast the track was today, uh, you know, it, it always gets you anxious. When, when, you, when you ran a, a 54-10 and guys are running in the 52s, uh, and, and it was interesting because right before I left the truck, I told Alan, I said, so it looks like about a half a second per corner. And a half a second per corner, uh, you know, as a driver is – it just isn't fathomable. So uh, to go out there and do that uh, and put up a good lap and be third, um, I'm, I'm thrilled. Very, very, very happy. Okay, we'll open up for questions here in the media. Please raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. We'll start up here with Reed. Reed Spencer with Sporting News. Uh, Jeff, as fast as the track was and with the cloud cover, did it really make a, a whole lot of difference whether you went out early or late today? No, that that's what saved us. You know, yeah, you know, that that's the one interesting thing that 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 I'm I'm seeing about about the the new setup this year that NASCAR has with uh, practice speeds determining when you go out. I love the fact that you're able to earn the right, you know, to to go out later because everybody always wants to go later. But now that they're starting to do qualifying on Saturdays and earlier on Saturdays, you don't want to go late. You want to go early. But today, due to the cloud cover. Um, it, it allowed uh, for the, the qualifying session to stay exciting throughout the entire um, um, session because, you know, the, the, the faster cars uh, were going late and in good conditions. I got a little concerned there right before I went out because there was a, quite a few good cars that weren't, uh, weren't getting themselves in the top ten. I know Biffle went like two cars before me his way back. And so it definitely uh, – had me a little concerned whether the track was losing some grip. Plus, I saw rain uh, drops, just a just a little miss of rain, uh, even as I took off off pit road. So, you know, you, you never know when you're pushing the car to the limit in those kinds of conditions. You know, the slightest little thing can can change. You know, even even the amount of rain that we had last night I was is it is it seeping up through some of the seams? So, you know, just uh, you know, coming to the green. I, I felt the grip level, and it was very good, and, and I just, uh, you know, pushed the car as hard as I could. I, I didn't think I had the best lap, I'll be honest. You know, I got down into, I got deep into one, but when I went to do my downshift, I, I drifted up the track a little bit, and so I didn't think I made a great turn one. I thought I got through the tunnel decent, and I thought I got through three really good, but as good as the grip level was, I thought it was going to take a whole lot more than that. Questions for Jeff? Any other questions for Jeff? Jeff, thank you very much. Congratulations. Good luck tomorrow. We now welcome into the media center Paul Menard, driver of the 27 Pittsburgh Paints Menard Chevrolet, who will start second uh, in tomorrow's 5-Hour Energy 500. This is Paul's second, fifth, well, posted his fifth top ten start of 2011 and his first in nine races at Pocono Raceway. Paul, just talk a little bit about qualifying and uh, your strategy for that, getting gearing up for the race tomorrow. Well, we, uh, we definitely thought it would rain out qualifying today, so we, we did one mock run yesterday early in practice, tried to get a post a good time. We kind of thought that that would be our qualifying run, honestly. Uh, and we're hoping for rain. Uh, you know, starting second, I, I was talking to Carl, and we're going to, if we saw any raindrops, we're going to say, hey, man, it's raining, but... Um, you know, to, to qualify second and actually put a lap down uh, was pretty cool, uh, uh, meaningful that way. Uh, we have a really good car, really fast Chevrolet. I uh, did a lot of long runs uh, yesterday in both practices and uh, very comfortable with the way that the, the car falls off. It doesn't fall off as, as much as uh, a lot of the cars do. 
Um, qualified, I, I nailed one and three. I was, I was really happy with one and, and three. Uh, I felt like I left some out there in turn two on exit. Um, might have, you know, a little disappointed. I thought we might have had a, a better lap, but um, overall, a, a good day. We'll open up for questions here in the media center. Raise your hand. We'll start up here with Reed. Reed Spencer with Sport News. Paul, same, same thing I, I asked Jeff. Uh, did the cloud cover make qualifying conditions relatively more consistent throughout the session, and, and was that what helped get you up to second place, even though no rain? Yeah, I mean, we, we gambled, obviously, yesterday with uh, you know, a day like today and normal circumstances. You want to go out early uh, before the track heated up. But we, uh, we thought, re really thought it would rain, so we uh, posted a good lap in, in practice. Uh, which made us go out late, but um, you know looking at the hourly forecast It was 70 degrees from start to finish uh, and cloudy so it, the track conditions didn't change a whole I might have got a little bit hotter, but uh, I think uh, we got a little bit of cloud cover right at the end of, of qualifying too, which probably helped Okay, we'll take another question from Lee Looks like you finally overcame your uh, your bad luck of late, but um can you talk a little bit about fuel? Have you been bit by that at all in the last three races? And obviously this will come into play tomorrow as well. Yeah, it's going to be a factor uh, tomorrow, I believe. Um, you know, starting up front here is so important, but, you know, the last couple of races just come down to fuel mileage and who, who can stretch it at the end. Uh, we, we weren't in a position to, uh, to stretch it. I think last week we were like six laps short or something, which you, you can't make up. So uh, we, had a, we had a short pit, but... Um, uh, you know, it's it's frustrating in one aspect that, that it comes down to that. I mean, we probably would have wound up about 12th or something. We finished 19th last week, but uh, it also opens up opportunities for for guys like Brad to to sneak one out, and and it's uh, we know that we can we can probably sneak one out one of these days too. But if, uh, if you know if the if everything goes our way and we play our cards, I think you're going to see some of that going on tomorrow, though. Questions for Paul? Okay, Paul. Thank you for your right. time. Congratulations. Good luck tomorrow. We now welcome our um, poll sitter for tomorrow's five hour energy 500, Kurt Bush, driver of the number two Shell Penzoil Dodge. Kurt, is, this is his 14th poll in 378 NASCAR Sprint Cup Series races, his second poll and seventh top 10 start in 2011, his first poll in 21 races here at Pocono Raceway, the third straight poll for Penske Racing. Kurt, just talk a little bit about the, the qualifying lap out there. Yeah, quite a bit of emotions today, uh, especially after having to bust out the backup car from yesterday's mishap. And to um, go out there today, if it was raining, we'd be starting last. And now, with uh, luckily the weather held out, we're up on the pole. So uh, amazing swing of events. And just, uh, a, just an honest thank you to my guys, especially the ones back at the shop preparing the cars, to pull the backup out. That's a, that's a pole-winning car. That's something you really wouldn't hear about back in the day. It would be, all right, you're going to have to struggle through the weekend. It's not the best of peace. And so it's great that uh, we've got that high of quality control within our system. So we haven't changed a lot of things since Richmond. It's just been some procedures, some processes, and maybe just looking at the data a little bit differently. And it's great to uh, come back out and, and be on the pole again. You know, as, as a race car driver, I was really, 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 really worried superstitious of number 13. I thought I was going to get stuck on the 13th pole for a long while, but to be number 14 already, we're moving on. So it feels good. Okay, we'll open up for questions. We'll start up here with Reed. I Reed Spencer with Sporting News. Kurt, we were wondering if this was like a new methodology where, you know, you, you get push the car to the limit in practice and then uh, and spin and then win the pole the next day? Well, it's, it's a matter of knowing where the edge is, but not stepping over it. And yesterday, um, honestly, I, I missed my shift point, and it uh, just trying different things, changing the rear gear, changing the transmission, uh, just being in a different zone of, of elements, of changes. You know, even normally uh, the last, what, three years, we haven't messed with gears at all. So it was, uh, it was cool to do that and mess with it, and it bit me. Today I went right back after it, though. I was aggressive, and I used the same procedure as I was using yesterday in practice where I wrecked to get to pole today. Okay, next question from Marty Smith. Uh, Marty Smith, ESPN. Kurt, I mean, it wasn't a month ago that we were all wondering what was wrong with Penske Racing. And now you've had two fantastic weeks so far. Is there any one thing you can point to that's different or changed or, I mean, outside of the personnel part? 
Again, I think it's back to looking at uh, our data differently and doing it in a sense of, you know, I, I took the apple tree and just shook it as hard as I could at Richmond, and we saw which apples fell and which ones were still there. There's some processes. There's um, procedures. Uh, there's a couple different personnel changes. It, it, it honestly was, hey, do we want to make this chase? we got to make some changes. Let's look at how we can reevaluate what we're doing because heading in the direction we were, we were just scraping those, those top tens or maybe running 15th. That's not going to get it done when you want to win a championship. So good, good movement since then. Questions for Kurt? Raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. Any other questions? Kurt, congrats. Oh, we'll go ahead and take one up here. Scott Walsh from the Scranton Time. Kurt, now that you're on the poll, what do you think uh, about the race tomorrow? Uh, obviously, fuel, fuel mileage could be a, uh, a factor here. Just kind of your thoughts on, on how you think the race might play out tomorrow. Yeah, I think tomorrow is, uh, unfortunately for us, it's a learn as you go. We didn't get many practice laps. I'm in the backup car, of course. And uh, the gear right now, there's uh, the, the, one of the engineers is like, hey, I think we should run this gear versus what my thoughts are. So we're going to have to go and really have a good sit-down discussion about it. Most importantly, it's, it's key to not over-rev the motor, not have the trans temperature get too hot with this gear change, and just stay on top of um, the, the new if, uh, if you end up having something that you bolt onto the car that you can't get out and it bites you, those are the days where you scratch your head and go, man, I told you so. So learn for us. We'll, we'll lean on Keselowski on what he did for his uh, practice runs yesterday. Use the most common sense that we have and, and go for it. But starting up front, we'll have that first pit box. We'll have the pole position. Hopefully, uh, we'll be up front leading laps again on uh, tomorrow. Okay, any other questions? All right. Kurt, congratulations. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks for coming in today. Great. Thank you.